you know, our family's always been in the sawmill business. We love the way of life, and it's hard work, but you know, there's nothing wrong with hard work. If you lived on an island, probably you'd be in fishing, or if you lived in the de desert, you'd be doing something with sand. But we live in a sea of trees, and it's only natural that we make a living from the woods and off the land. We make square boards, or rectangular boards, out of round logs, so we make a lot of chips. And those all go to the paper companies. The paper industry has been suffering. When we lose those paper companies, we lose the market for those chips. And uh, that means that the whole wood industry in Maine is suffering because we need markets for a low-grade wood. Buildings account for about 40% of the total carbon emissions globally. Buildings have to save energy to address climate change. You know, one of the advantages of having a design build company and not just being an architect is that you get feedback every day about the buildings you're building, the materials you're using, and how it's going. It really depends on the insulation product you use as to how effective you're going to be in actually saving carbon. We've always had complaints about insulation. It's itchy. It's scratchy. We make all these microplastic beads when we cut it. They have, you know, kind of scratchy respiratory issues after using it. They're using full respirators and Tyvek suits in many cases to install it. We knew there was a problem. It takes about eight years of energy savings, carbon savings in emissions to pay for the carbon debt of the original insulation you install when you're using conventional insulation. Quite frankly, we don't have eight years to wait. You just pick it up, you know what it is. You know it, that it's wood fiber. You know, I wanted to know more about the product and how it performed, and Matt said, you know, best in, in class acoustics, best in class uh, vapor permeability. So we knew about wood fiber insulation from Europe. We're talking about a material that's natural. It's 95% wood. There's no added toxins. And I said, you know, when are we gonna use it? And he said, never because it's not manufactured here and shipping it is not you know a business model that works and I just couldn't really accept that I couldn't understand why this product was not manufactured in North America where we have better wood resources than they do in Europe and we have a building style that fits this type of insulation better than, than what they have there I lived in Maine all my life and you drive around Maine any town you go through, almost, there's some buildings sitting there that something used to be there. Most people don't realize what a tremendous economic engine a paper mill is. You know, they employ hundreds of people. The people who worked at the UPM paper plant for so many years, their intellect, their capability, their passion for forest products, for the community. Losing that out of your community, a, a small community, is absolutely devastating. When we're up at full production, we're employing more than 100 people in that community. Well, those are 100 good paying jobs in a community that is a couple thousand people. Um, that has a multiplier effect that is massive um, for the overall community. And it really is the identity of a lot of these communities in Maine. We need working forests in order to grow the forest, in order to keep them viable. When it comes to Madison, it's right in the heart of the wood basket for Maine. We have a huge market in the Northeast for insulation. It's the biggest insulation market in the entire United States. We have a lot of existing housing that needs to be upgraded. The key to addressing the climate crisis with buildings is to not only save energy in the future, but also do it with insulation products that come to the job site with a negative carbon footprint or that are carbon storing and wood fiber insulation is the only scalable option that can do that. You know, it's easy to handle, it's very familiar, it's not scratchy, they can cut it easily, the byproduct of the cutting is sawdust. 
With wood fiber, you never have that impermeable layer. And like Gore-Tex, it allows that moisture to move through the assembly, not causing any mildew or rot in that wall assembly. And so the game-changing aspect of wood fiber insulation is that not only does it have the favorable building performance attributes, but it's also cost competitive. And that's really key to the success of any insulation is that it has to be cost competitive with the alternates in the market, but also bring the building science performances that we need. It is a dynamic industry and we have to keep changing to keep up with the times. Every time you add a little more value, you leave some of the competition behind. Well, I see the same thing with Golab. They're gonna make at least three different products there, you know, that's adding value. Wherever there's timber, there's sawmills, wherever there's sawmills, there are residuals that they need to get rid of. And everybody I know that burns their chips would rather sell their chips to somebody like a Golab or a paper company. Once the reputation gets out there and what a great product this is, and people learn how to use it, I think it will go all over the country.